What's up, everybody? Today, I want to talk to you about my experiences now that I went and lived in Nicaragua for a while and I'm back in the States. One thing that's going to be relevant in this video is to know that I wasn't born in the States and I was raised traveling. Um, so for me, this was a much more nostalgic experience than for most people visiting a foreign country, okay? But there's two things that I want to address in this video that have really impacted me. Um, specifically about how I view things now that I'm back after my time in Nicaragua and how I feel about the states in general. Um, because as a US person, I'm very torn because I, I, I really understand now that if you can be anywhere in the world the United States is one of the places where you have the least uninhibited ability to change your life. Um, say that you find yourself homeless in a major city in the States. Hell, say you find yourself homeless in a rural area in the States. As long as you are able to get yourself to another location, if you can get yourself into a big city and then in those areas where there's lots of people, there are ways for you to access technology. You can access a computer. You can access food. It may not be under the circumstances that you want, but these are all things that almost everybody in the States has constant access to, even in dire, dire life situations. We always have the ability of fucking off and actually being able to live just because we're willing to start from nothing from the beginning, right? If you are good, if you know the communities and you have the ability to go to these places, in the United States, you can always absolutely make that happen. This isn't as true overseas for most humans who are born into this world it's not the case they are born into situations where they don't have that access to technology to even know that these things exist in the first place and obviously that happens here but the point is that we have so much access to technology and what's so what tears me up about it is how unappreciative we are of that opportunity like and I, I'm, I'm, I'm unappreciative of this as well. Like the fact that like I felt any negative emotion about the fact that I didn't pursue college fully, right? That I have insecurities about the fact that I didn't get a degree, even though I live a good life. The fact that I even have those insecurities is so hypocritical because in so many countries in the world, People couldn't even have the ability to do that, let alone go to school. They couldn't do, like, the, they don't have the, the access to information necessary to know that they can change their, their lives with just an internet connection. Like, that, those concepts don't exist to those people. They don't have access to it. And I have access to it. And because of this access, I'm able to make a life even though I don't do the mainstream thing of going to school, right? But that's only because I exist in the States. And like, I appreciate that. But it, it makes me question a lot of things about the way that we live here. And particularly, like, if you compare how much money a United States person goes through, like the average person getting a college degree, right? Let's say that they only spend $10,000 on their degree for like four years, right? Which isn't much money at all. That's really, really, really cheap. There's a lot of people who spend 10 times that, right? That's enough money for whole families to exist for a lifetime well with internet access in a lot of other places in the world. And as a person, like, I want to find ways to become increasingly more fulfilled in life and how if I can tap into exponential growth and exponential income, how I can do that in a way that doesn't improve my, my own life exponentially, because you, can, you hit a wall, right? You can only improve your own life so much. I, I wanna under, really understand how I can 
be efficient with the change that I find and the opportunity and work with communities of other people who bring that change and opportunity also into their lives as well, right? And this really tears me up because I have to acknowledge the fact that in the United States, pretty much no matter who you are, your biggest obstacle is your mind. It's, that is almost always going to be true. It's going to be your big, biggest obstacles are your mind and the people around you who may be limiting you or who may be abusive, but ultimately you always have the option of leaving a situation and finding somewhere else. You may be controlled into staying, but you ultimately always have that option. It's quite feasible, right? Whereas in a lot of places overseas, those options are just nowhere near as available. The access to technology is nowhere near as available in rural areas. And it's sad because I have to accept that People overseas, I think, are more deserving of opportunity than people in the United States because we have everything that we need. The problem for most Americans is our, the fact that most of us were raised by people who had much harder lives and we were raised with easier lives with access to everything and I don't believe that as a society um, our generation was taught properly the kind of responsibility that should come with that access I don't think that we as Americans appreciate what we have anywhere near as much as we should and what's unfortunate is it's really easy to make Americans appreciate what we have, all you have to do is go to other countries, like literally just travel somewhere and come back. And you have very much appreciation for things. You start to grasp how different a lot of the world is, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's better or worse in other places in, in this scenario. That's not what I'm trying to talk about here. What I'm, what I'm really getting at is that I feel like I relate to people overseas more. Um, people overseas tend to be more, I'm not saying always, but they tend to be more open-minded and more like they've been through really hard stuff. They've been through death, loss, devastation. So they are more appreciative of the things that they have in general. I'm not saying this is always true and I'm not saying that everybody in the United States doesn't appreciate what we have. Um, my point's just that overseas people do tend to be more appreciative. And, and my time in Nicaragua has really made me look at my own life and um, what I want to do and how to use money efficiently. Um, it's really opened my, my mind to that if you're raised in the States and you haven't been elsewhere, and I'm not talking about like toured somewhere and visited like the beach and just done touristy stuff. Like if you haven't spent time living with other people in another country, um, then you, you have to understand that it is highly likely that you, you aren't as appreciative of things as people are overseas. Um, and this is true in many, many, many ways. It's, it's true with, with company, right? Um, ev everywhere in the world has the problem with phones where people are paying more attention to their phones. That, that's true everywhere, right? But there are a lot of places in the world where there is more emphasis placed on like being present and spending time with one another while you're still alive and in each other's lives um, in other cultures, for sure. These are just all the things that go through my mind. I'm so absolutely so glad that, that I went. Um, and I miss, I miss the people that I met there because like I have 
a handful, like two, two or three people in the States that I really, 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 really relate to and like. Um, but I wouldn't say that I'm, I really relate to most, most people I know here. Whereas I, I found that the people in Nicaragua, probably because I was raised traveling, I've always been a foreigner. So it was just, I don't know. I just, I found that in, in some ways I've related to them more as people. Um, than I relate to a lot of the people that I know in the States. But I guess that's just because, you know, I wasn't raised in the States. I'm not like I'm, I have American citizenship, but I'm not really a traditional American because I was, I, I didn't even live here till I was 10. So most of my like formative years happened in foreign countries. Um, so that, that's always given me some somewhat of an identity complex or insecurity identity. I don't know what it is. But I'm always a foreigner, no matter where I am, right? In the States, I'm a foreigner. I've like, I, I don't have much of an accent anymore, but I used to have a, a heavy British accent. So as a kid, I was always a foreign British person in America. But if I was ever in England, I was always an American. And if I was ever in any other country, I was always, you know, English or American foreign. So no matter where I was, I was always foreign. And I think so many people that I know have this this huge emphasis on um, like pride for their country and loyalty to their country. And in my case, because I was exposed to so many different countries, it's, it's been hard for me to understand that um, just because there isn't one place that I was really from. So ever since I've been a kid, I've been forced to look at it more like as people. Um, and I find that I have a strong bond to people regardless of what country they're from, just because I've been exposed to so many different cultures and seen so many different kinds of people um, that I understand that really humans are actually quite similar to one another. Almost no matter where you are in the world, humans need the same things to be happy. We need to be feel like we're contributing to part of a community of people who we respect and admire. Um, and as long as we are like these people, then we tend to feel quite happy. Um, and that's regardless of culture, that's regardless of where you are in the world, that's almost always true no matter what language you speak. Ultimately, human beings are way, way, way more alike one another than we are different. But in order to feel like, in order to have personalities and all of that, right, we emphasize so much on our differences because we're raised around other humans. We have to focus on what makes us different in order to understand what makes us who we are. Um, but it, it's really important to be able to take that objective look at humanity and to be able to step back and understand that really we are way more similar than we are different. Granted, we all experience different things growing up. We're exposed to different forces that shape us in different ways, but Ultimately, you can almost always predict the environment that will make a human feel comfortable versus the environment that will make them feel uncomfortable. Regardless of culture, you can, you can read people's body language. You know, if we're not fed and housed, there's going to be problems in our lives. There's, you know, we are very similar as people. And in some ways, I, I used to be bitter that I wasn't from a specific country because of this, because of this concept of like, all oh, these, they, they, this person's proud to be American. They're, they're from America and this person's from this country. They're very that, they embrace it. They embody the culture. They, they talk about being proud of it. And I just didn't, I never had that. And so for a long time I was a, I was a bit resentful or bitter about it. Um, but I eventually understood that the way that I need to look at it is I need to focus on what I can make the best of, right? And the, the, the way to make the best of that is to understand that because I don't feel like I'm from any one place, then I can be more relatable to everybody and that I can really relate more to all people regardless of where they come from instead of just to the specific culture that I identify with. Um, and I think for YouTube work in particular, this is quite beneficial, obviously, just because, you know, anybody can watch you from anywhere in the world. So it makes more sense to be more culturally open-minded and accepting, right? Um, 
Well, yeah, these are the things that have gone through my head since visiting Nicaragua. And I'll do another video about like what the experience was like. Um, Cause I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna visit and go back at some point just because I made some connections with people there that I wanna keep for the rest of my life. They're really cool people. And I think if, if you go to another country and you don't leave behind people who you miss and who miss you, then what was the point of going to the country? To just like tour, get drunk, have an experience? Like, what's the point of all that if you don't make any long lasting relationships and connections with people? Because that's really what life is about, is those, these long lasting, fulfilling relationships with people that you respect and admire, right? Because that's, being around those people, that's how we feel most happy, most satisfied, and most fulfilled, right? But I figured I would share this because it's been on my mind a lot. I definitely, uh, yeah, I, as U.S. citizens, we have it, we have it really well. And um, I'm trying to find more ways for myself in particular to be more appreciative of the things that I have and to, uh, to slow, slow my mind down more, to take my time and eat my food and enjoy things more because you know, you never know what's gonna happen and we have it really well here. Like, like I'm not a wealthy person in the States at all. Like I'm very much lower class. Um, I'm not like, you know, food stamps poor, but I don't earn much money. I'm able to work around that because I need so little money to live and I can, I have so much free time I can work on stuff. And I think I have an amazing quality of life. But the reality is I don't live, I don't live a luxurious life at all. Um, but the fact that I'm even able to do that, the fact that I'm even able to have all of these experiences, like every day I can go out and have a new experience that makes me more, um, that, that just like improves my life and makes me a better, more talented individual. And that is something that most people just don't have access to. And I'm really trying to be much, much more aware of this and appreciate these things that I have in my own life um, and enjoy them because ultimately, like if you earn everything in the world, it doesn't matter if you don't enjoy it around people who you love. That's what the whole point of life is, right? So, yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, okay? Ciao.